Okay, so we are now recording. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So why the focus on transitions to kindergarten? So just a little background overview on why we chose this particular um, project and what the importance of this is. And a lot of you probably already know this because I'm guessing you work with young children and their families, but just a quick so quick overview. Um, as we know, kindergarten is the first introduction in a lot of our SAUs and schools for a child to go into a public school. Sometimes it's pre-K, but not all of our schools have public pre-K. Um, and then even when it is pre-K, sometimes it's a little bit different being in pre-K to public school and then still transitioning to public school, which is something we will talk about. And it also can be the first time for a child transition or for a parent or family transitioning their child into a public school setting. Um, it can be a really overwhelming time. There's a lot of new people, new routines, different times, your buildings are different, you're busing, you're you know going on a bus now, what do we pack? How do we drop off? Where do we pick up? All of those things can be really overwhelming and not just for families, but also for the children and sometimes for the teachers, because the fact of the matter is, um, if we're not building out transition plans and working with our community providers, we don't know necessarily who's coming or have any back or have a lot of background on families and children that are coming to us. And that can be, um, it can be so much easier to meet them where they are at if we have that information prior to. Um, and again, even if your students are coming from a pre-K that's in your school building, it can still be, you know, they're generally in their room. Sometimes they'll go out for allied art specials and sometimes they'll have meals in their room. Um, they won't always have a knowledge or understanding of the bigger school. They're a lot younger. Their routines are a lot different. So it's a lot of different changes. Um, and then just what we're going to talk about is building transition plan that brings children, families, communities, and schools together so that we can ensure that everyone is supported and being successful in school. So we're looking at children being successful and parents being successful and engaged. And we're looking at teachers being successful, working with the students who are coming to them to meet them where they're at, and also communities that support those schools and teachers um, to, be, to help to be it, as part of that success. And so the question is, in Maine, what do children really need in order to be ready to enroll in kindergarten? Because we do talk about kindergarten readiness. Um, so what is the one thing that we actually need children to have before they can, are ready to be enrolled in kindergarten? And since we have quite a few of us on here, I'm not going to let you guys answer that. I'm going to tell you the one thing we need is age. That child, before we enroll them into kindergarten, has to be five before or on October 15th of that school year. So if they don't have that, then they are not ready to be in kindergarten. And if they do, they 100% are ready and they meet every single qualification to be enrolled in a public kindergarten program, which is really important to know. Um, so this opportunity, we're, are gonna, I'm going to give you a rundown. I probably should have switched these slides. I'm going to give you a rundown of what it's going to look like and how, it, how the opportunity is going to go. But let's talk first about who can apply for this opportunity. So when we put the, um, when we put the newsroom article out, it does say we really support um, community providers in being part of this. It's a need that has to happen as part of this opportunity. And so I think we do have a number of community providers on this call, which is awesome. Um, the reason we put that in there and, and what, we, what we would recommend is for you to go to your school, your schools, your superintendents, your assistant superintendents, your principals, and, and start the conversation. This is a great place um, Collaborating on building out transition teams and transition plans into public school is a great place for, for these partnerships to start. So it may not be pro partnering in programs but it, and programming for um, children, but it could be partnering starting in transitions, which is a really strong place to start. Um, so the school administrative units or SAUs and schools can apply for this opportunity. But this opportunity is meant to bring community partners together to support children and families. So that said, the application will only come through the SAU or school district, and it will also include the community to engage with them also. Specifically, um, when you go on the registration link, it will ask for um, a SAU or school representation and leadership. So that would be your you know, principal, vice principal, superintendent, assistant superintendent, somebody who's in the leadership um, role in that school or district, and then one staff member or educator, which could be kindergarten teacher, pre-K teacher, um, 
a pre-K coordinator, if, there, if that's a role that's in your school, um, that, you know, that, that would be the, that would be who we're looking for. And then community representation, um, at minimum one community child care provider. In the uh, newsroom article, and I believe in the registration form, there's a link to childcarechoices.org, and that will bring you to a website where you can search your town, and all it will give you all of the child cares, um, their contact information, and a few other details about them in your area. So you can look through, you look by town to find out who your child care providers are if you don't already know. Um, that said, we, through technical assistance, which we'll talk about in just a moment, we are going to work to identify additional team members from your community and from your um, school and district that could come together to be on this team. Um, so let's look at the benefits and the outcomes, the possible outcomes of partic participation. So we're looking at building an understanding of why the transition to kindergarten is so critical. And this is going to be looking like a universal understanding in your SAU, in your community, with your community providers, your families, your teachers, your leadership, all of those people who are so very important in this, in this transition to life. Um, we're gonna work to build a universal understanding so that everybody understands what we're going for here. We're gonna look at learning strategies for building smooth and positive year-long transition to kindergarten plans. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that every day or week we're doing something for this tr transition, but it does mean that every couple of times a year, maybe we do a family workshop or we work with our community providers and other resources in our community to have um, events outside of the school that are out in the community to bring in those uh, incoming kindergarten families and sort of get to know them, have them get to know us and have those children and families just feel that much more comfortable when they are coming into school. Um, gain an understanding of building a transition team and strategies for communication. So we talked about um, district or school leadership and uh, educator would be on that team and then a community community provider at minimum. Um, excuse me. We're going to look at ways to build out that transition team. We're going to look at other possible community members, family members, uh, other people who might who could bring something important to the table for this. Um, and then strategies and communication, because when we're talking about uh, the, uh, the, you know, why this is so beneficial and what we're doing, the communication is gonna be a really big part of that when we're doing outreach. So we're gonna talk about that. Um, and then have an opportunity to implement your transition plans and events that will support children, families, schools, and communities with ongoing support as well. And that would be an outcome. And so we talk about what the what this opportunity actually looks like. So this is an opportunity that will be a mini grant awarded. Um, and essentially it's a technical assistance opportunity. So starting on October 29th would be our first technical assistance visit. Registration will be closing around October 25th. So the link was in the, um, I actually will put it in the chat in a moment, the link for the registration form. So that will be completed. And then our first virtual TA meeting will be from 4 to 5.30 on October 29th. Later in the day, at least for the first couple of sessions, because we are including our community providers, and that means we have to be mindful of timing for them and their programming as well. Um, I do have two dates set aside for November 19th and December 17th. And then I do have times, I wanna say they're also at four o'clock and we can decide future dates later as a team and how, how we work together on that. So essentially those first couple of um, technical assistant meetings will be talking about communication. It'll be talking about the value in building out transition plans, what that looks like, looking at who in our community and schools might possibly, might be one at the table to build that team with and how do we get them involved. Um, we're gonna look at our systems working together. So our systems being our public school system, and our community provider system and then other different um, entities in our community that can be helpful. So maybe like a community center or a faith-based organization, possibly like a YMCA, those sort of um, places where families go and um, libraries is a good one that can also be part of this transition plan um, and can be helpful, be beneficial to be on the team as well. And this is just a really quick overview. So there will be a lot more information when we're doing the technical assistant um, sessions. Um, so during October to February, we'll be working on bringing all these, all of these things together and building out a transition plan with the help of the team that you've implemented. 
Um, that transition plan is meant to be year long. It's meant to start around, you know, October, November of the essentially pre-K year, four-year-old year for that family and child and run until September, October of the following year, because what research also shows us is that once children and families have transitioned into kindergarten, that first day of school, that first week, that's not when the support and the transition ends. It goes on for at least a month or two, um, sometimes longer, depending on the child. And it, that's just a really important thing. So there will be, I think it says at the bottom, but in September and October of 2025, there will, will do two virtual sessions then also as a follow-up where we vi revisit plans, revisit team members, what do we need, what worked, what didn't work, where the barriers were, where the challenges are, and we'll talk about, we'll talk that through. In our February meeting, um, we are going to be doing a presentation of our transition plans that we have built out. And after that work is done and sort of we've gone through that, um, that's when the mini grant will be awarded. The mini grant funding um, is actually meant to help with implementation of some of your events, some of your things that are in your transition plan. And um, we're looking at, it really depends on the a number of registration and um, number of kindergarten classrooms and that sort of thing. And we, so I will have the information on what the funding amount will be. I do not know that yet, but we will have that before we start our technical assistance. Um, and then the f spring will be, uh, again, virtual meetings monthly for technical assistance and support. And then we'll work on implementation of your plan during spring over summer and into the next school year. There will be an opportunity for technical assistance meetings that might be one-on-one -on -one also with one um, SAU and their team. Um, we, can, we can work that out as needed as we go. And then just a little bit more about technical assistance. So I, we did talk a little bit about the topics. I actually forgot I put the slide in here, so I apologize. Um, so the technical assistance topics, which we did talk about, building out a communication plan to invite and engage potential team members and families that we spoke of, school and community systems, um, the importance of working together. We're in a lot of talking about how important our schools and our communities um, supporting our community child care providers and vice versa and why that's so important, not just for the programs themselves, because that's a big deal, but also for children and families um, and for educators at school too. Developing a transition plan that supports all children and families. So we're looking at, um, you know, culturally responsive, linguistically responsive um, and sustainability, and then continued support after the start of the kindergarten year, because again, that transition doesn't end just because we've walked into school and we've been there for a year, that transition and that support needs to be ongoing for a few months after that. Oops. Um, okay. And so I really appreciate you guys joining us today. That was a quick overview. I definitely wanted to have time for questions and we just we have a short amount of time together today. So um, please feel free to unmute and go ahead and ask questions. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the registration link for the opportunity in the chat. So I'm gonna stop sharing as well. But please feel free to just unmute and ask any questions that you have. I have a question. <clears throat> so as a family child care provider, how does that work for us? Because you were talking about the SAU, which to me sounds like public school district, correct? Yes. So the opportunity will actually be funded through the public school district. So it's going to be actually the school district or SAU that needs to complete the registration form. Um, my focus on inviting um, family child care and um, you know, private child care providers to this opportunity is to say, you're very, very important in this opportunity because you are the ones who have these children and these families for the first, you know, up to five years of their lives, right? And so you have the background, you have the information, a lot of things that are going to be really important to the teachers and the educators. So mm -hmm. the transition really works best when everybody's working together. So I would um, support you in going to your superintendent, principal, vice principal, assistant superintendent, um, and starting these conversations and maybe bringing the information that you found and say, look, I have found this information. I'd love to partner with your school 
um, and your teachers and your incoming families with this opportunity toward the transition into kindergarten and, and start the over and start the conversation there. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you. Are there any other questions? I I don't um there's a lot of information to to learn. Um I was just reaching out today to um in regards to the pre-K co collaboration within a school district and one of my family members shared with me Christine's name as a contact um sure. the, the the process so my understanding is there's two daycares in the Wyndham era Wyndham Raymond area um one being a child's world and one being two casa I believe um mm -hmm. that is collaboration in offering the, a pre-k program I last year I had wanted to fast track it but like life happened and it couldn't happen but I'm really interested in it and I got this email today about the zoom meeting and was thrilled because I'm like, how, how does that happen? <laughs> but, right, um, right. So yeah, so I'm, I'm really excited about pursuing it and kind of fast tracking it. And I, I hate losing my littles. Like I, not that I take it personally, but it's really hard. And I would love to be able to offer the, to my families, the opportunity to continue the care in the place that their child has been with for so many years and offer that pre-K program to ready ready them for kindergarten like it's I'm very excited about it really excited about it so that's awesome I love the enthusiasm I think that's wonderful um I don't know if you <laughs> noticed in the chat but Christine uh left you a message that says let's connect so you Yay! have Christine <laughs> on here <laughs> I don't know if yeah, you're on here. um so there's a great connection right there yeah um, so so yeah and I think what is important to know is that we need, I mean, we need our child cares, right? We need our child cares, our, our zero to five. We need that system to be sustained and yeah. working together and, and doing these opportunities together is how we're going to start that process. Um, yeah. This is not necessarily an opportunity to start, um, you know, share partnering in pre-K programming at this point. This is to partner around kindergarten transitions. But exactly. it's a great place to sort of start those really building those relationships and getting to know who is in your SAU and who is in your schools and what that might what the landscape looks like, because it might not always look like what the SAU folks think it does. It might not always look like what the child care folks think it does. But working together and figuring that out is how um, it's how we're going to you know support everybody. So this is just a great place to really start building those relationships and Absolutely. It takes a village, doesn't it? You know, so this is a great, I was it's like the third was, time I've heard that today. Sorry, Marcy. No, um, um, and not, not to take anything away from this experience, which is a great opportunity to really focus on transition to kindergarten planning across communities. But I did want to mention that there's another opportunity also available at the moment that is intended to bring community teams together and one of the things that you can work on is kindergarten transition planning, but it's also a chance to explore other ways of building relationships across the community. And exactly. that also comes with an opportunity at the end of it for some um, mini grant funding. So, mm -hmm. and communities can apply for both of those. There's no reason why your team couldn't be partaking of both of them if it's helpful to your work. Right, that's great. But, great to know. Okay. a link to our there's our early learning page on our newsroom that has actually has the link to the transition opportunity it has a link to the um collaboration i forget what it's called I, the name was just changed and so i forget what it was called um because it's collaborating across communities yes collaborating yeah. across communities so that is in there and there's a couple more offerings that we have in there too office hours and those sort of things that would would be great for information for you to have so that page will bring you to all of those things and i also will just put a shout out that if you i think on the left on the right hand side there's a place to subscribe to the doe newsroom all of our opportunities whether it's professional development office hours um newsletters that sort of thing comes out through the newsroom so if you were to subscribe to that you would get all of those 
um, oh, opportunities right. as well. Um, and the majority of our professional development is virtual and it is at no cost. And we do offer contact hours and we welcome child care providers and family child care providers and community members and community, community providers, as well as public school. So. Kim, did you have a question? I saw you came off mute. I do. Yeah. Um, so what happens if you're multiple, you're, you serve multiple communities? Like we serve Topsom School District and we also do Brunswick. So what happens with your with our transitions? Are we going to do two separate teams or you, two, two different registrations? Or do we? It, if, I guess if both of your communities we're going to apply for the opportunity, then they would each need to submit their own. Um, okay. But you could certainly be a part of both of their teams. And if only one of them is going to pursue this, then you could be a part of, of that one. Okay. Yeah. And the, the registration will have to come through the SAU. So it'll have to come from the, whoever in leadership in the school or, or um, district is. Okay. But yeah. They could both do that and they're very close together. So that would actually work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ryan, I saw you come off mute also. Did you have a question? Yeah, I did. So um, sure. in Portland, there is a really wide range of child care centers. Is there that same backward support of us to reaching and connecting with those healthcare centers as there would be for them to connect with us when we sit down and have those conversations to bring those partners in to be a part of that? Is that that's also built into the process? A hundred percent. I would say in my experience, that's generally it's the public school and the SAU reaching to child cares to try to start the partnerships. Right. Um, but sometimes we don't know what we don't know. So we often support our child care providers in reaching to the district, which doesn't mean anything is going to happen overnight or that it's going to be, you know, receptive or we don't we don't know, because, again, you don't know what you don't know. But yes, a hundred percent go the other way also. Um, childcarechoices.org. I will put mm -hmm. that in the chat also. That's going to give you, um, that's going to take you, oh, that didn't go through as a link, but that's going to take you to a website again that will, you, it literally searches all the, ch it's a childcare database from the state of Maine. So I think you go in by like town, you can look by age if you want to, age of the children. Um, there's a couple other, um, filters you can look through also, but it will give you all the Shelters in your area, but a hundred percent, I I would say yes, definitely, definitely reach out. I would not, I would not wait if you're interested. I think that would be phenomenal. Thank you. And and know that you don't have to have it all done before, you know, putting in an application. It's it, we're just asking that you at least have um, a couple people from the school system and at least one community-based yeah. provider to get things started. And then part of the TA process will be around how do we reach out and. Uh, build a transition to kindergarten team that is representative of our community. Um, so you can include more child care. You are going to want to have family members be represented, you know, have some parent voice at the table um, and some of your other community partners who can be really helpful in the process. I also will say on the registration link, it does ask for the programs that you'll be partnering with. Um, if you are if before the 25th of October, if you haven't made, the, you've made connections maybe, but you haven't gotten a firm answer, I think that's fine because again, we're gonna go through the process of reaching out and how, what that looks like and, and look at folks that you may not have even considered before that's gonna be part of this TA. Um, so just make a note that you have reached out, you know, wherever you are in that process, I think that would be fine as long as we, as long as I know I'm going into it um, because I can support you through that too. We have about two more minutes um, and I am happy to stay on for a few minutes longer if there are more questions, but um, if not, I did put my email address in the chat as well. And, oh, you're right, Sarah, thank you. It is .me, I do that every time and it never brings me to the right place and I never remember, so thank you. Childcarechoices.me. So if there are any more questions, I will give you your evening. And thank you so much again for joining. Um, registration link is in the chat. You have my email. If you have any questions, 
um, later on this week or next week that you have, just please feel free to reach out at any point. Wonderful. And I thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Stop the recording.